hi, uh, guys, gals, non-binary pals, whatever else you are. I'm Avery or Hazel or Kylie. Pick one. I don't care. And I am the smooth brain, Lily. Ah, yes, indeed. And you should know that this is the strangest thing I have ever done. Today, we are covering Tangled. Uh, um, Disney, um, nerf, um, please nerf frying pan to OP. Okay, so, um, obviously there will be spoilers for Tangled, um, and you will be able to purchase or rent the movie with the link in the description if you are listening to this on YouTube. If you are not, just go to Vudu and search it, but you can also look for it. You can also watch it on Disney+. Plus. Actually, I don't think I have some red box, but go to your red box if it does happen, just buy it. Why not? So, what do you think of this movie? Honestly, I want to start out with is I keep hearing you about how much you love this movie. The one thing I never hear is why. Is I never ask. <laughs> we will certainly be talking about it. Um, but, like, I want to know what you thought first. I mean, it's a um, pretty good movie. I'm not going to say as above some of my favorite movies. But I definitely can't say... Mm -hmm. Definitely better than average. Probably around a bit better than good area. Okay, so for starters, this movie came out in 2010. It was like Walt literally Di every other movie. Yeah, we've covered so many movies from 2010 at this point, it's honestly insane. 2010 seems to have had a lot of really, really good movies. Um, but this was Walt Disney Animation Studios' 50th movie ever. And honestly, I think they knocked it out of the park with this one. It was a return... It, it was kind of a return to form. Um, it was a return to the style of movies that they used to do before they had that awkward phase in the late 90s and throughout the 2000s where they were putting out a lot of weird stuff. Uh, n not really weird, but like, there was no real uniformity to their movies. You had stuff like Lilo and Stitch, Atlantis the Lost Empire, The Emperor's New Groove, uh, Treasure Planet, The Princess and the Frog. Like At least half of those movies were really good. Yeah. And this movie is often said to be the one that kickstarted the modern Disney renaissance. And honestly, I don't think any movie sent, like any Disney movie from Disney Animation Studios since then has topped it. I can see arguments for Wreck It Ralph. I can see that. I can't. Wreck-It Ralph is an amazing movie, and I would put it in the top four of Disney Animation Studios. There's four movies that I think belong specifically in the highest tier of Disney. Tangled's one of them. So is Wreck-It Ralph. Just didn't do it for me. But, um, and then, you know... People are really loving Encanto, but then part of that, I feel, is like how recent it is. We'll see if... Mm -hmm. it, and, and to be fair, I haven't seen it, but there is obviously, no matter what, going to be a recency bias. That is true. I mean, you see that a lot. Um... You know, when something new release, you have, like, this sort of bandwagon where people, um, you know, constantly share and talk about this movie. And once the new movie comes out, everything just goes quiet. 
Yeah. Well, see, the funny thing is, like, people did not talk about Encanto when it first came out in theaters. No one was talking about it. And then it dropped on Disney+, Plus, and suddenly everyone was talking about it. I miss theaters. I still go, occasionally. Um, I am playing... I actually have... Um, oh, I, yeah, have... I, have a, I have a theater gift card somewhere. I think I'm going to go to um, Sonic 2. Yeah, the, the next movie I'm planning to go see in theaters is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which actually should nice. be before this podcast episode even comes out. Because uh, mm-hmm. it's going to be next week, actually. Nice. Um, but yeah, I really think Disney knocked it out of the park with this one. I think, uh, honestly, like... You know, they've done the whole, you know, romance in a single day storyline so many times. But this and is now the f- it's three days. Well, yeah, but either way, it's like probably the most believable out of all of their very quick romance stories. Most, I guess. But I also just can't believe it. (laughs) Well, and see, there's the other thing, too, is, like, um, they don't actually get married at the end. Um, It would take them years before that ever happens, which is something that that I can appreciate. Um, It it definitely Definitely, adds to the believability. Hmm. It's almost like some characters in a certain other movie could take note of that. In Frozen. Uh, Frozen is a very... uh, Okay, let's touch on this debate for a second. There's, like, for some reason there's this massive debate about which is the better movie, Frozen or Tangled. I'm sorry, Frozen doesn't even get close. I have my mixed feelings on Tangled. Frozen can't even walk up to Tangled. Yeah, like... How do I put this? Like, I'm trying to make an outrage... I I want to make an outrageous comparison here. It's like... I like outrageous. Hmm. Let's see. What do I want to say here? I wonder if it's um, like, Kay washes our podcast. It's like asking if Windows 8 is better than Windows 10. Ouch. <laughs> you didn't have to go that hard. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I should have gone harder. It's like asking if Windows Millennium Edition is better than Windows 10. No, I think Windows 8 is better. Most his people I share remember Windows 8. Yeah, the problem with Windows Millennium Edition is it literally did not even function. <laughs> like, at all. Hey, just like uh, Frozen did as a movie. Yeah, exactly. And actually, to be honest, I don't even think Windows 10 is the best operating system. I think Windows 7 was better, actually, which is funny because... We're a movie podcast, not a um, uh, tech one. (laughs) Who cares? We can talk about other stuff, too. I want to talk about Frozen. Well, (laughs) while we're at it, I'm going to blow some people's minds for a second. Windows 7 is built on the same hardware as Windows Vista. They're the same operating system, just with a couple of performance updates and security updates, and enough time to pass for hardware to be ready for it. They are the same operating system underneath all of that. Exactly the same. 
Hey, at least the Mac, uh, the Mac ads um, were funny. Your mic is uh, kind of getting muddled on like the phone oh. side of things. Whoops. Um, see, I took one headphone out, and that headphone was the one that actually had the mic built into it. <laughs> ah, gotcha. So this movie, um, one of the key things here for me is um, I really relate to Rapunzel uh, because my my family wasn't the best and um, they were definitely guilty of gaslighting me um, quite a lot, um, which reminds me we should uh, say th there is a cinema therapy video on this movie. Go watch that video. They're better than us. Even back then, because that's one of their older videos. <laughs> Just go watch a free um, person that makes movie ex um, exploiting someone for free therapy. Yeah, but then also, um, like, I had an ex um, who really, she gaslighted me a lot. Um, and it was by far the most toxic relationship I have ever been in. And I was in that relationship for two years before I finally broke out of it. Now, what I find interesting about gaslighting is like the um, originating of the word. Very interesting stuff, I tell you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, throughout the movie, Gothel definitely gaslights Rapunzel a lot. And she meets all 11 of the signs of gaslighting that were highlighted in that Psychology Today article. I forget the name of the psychiatrist or psychologist or whatever um, that wrote it. But, yeah, it was... It's almost like it was deliberate. <laughs> Unless, I mean, I mean, technically you do have um, a doctor working at Pixar. And then um, the other thing, too, is like being raised by someone who is not your biological parent is another connection that I have to Rapunzel. Um, And, like, I didn't really have a father figure, even though the gaslighting person who raised me did have a husband who lived in the same house. He just never took on a parental role. He was just kind of there. the money. <laughs> That's it. He was, he was the money, pretty much. Now, okay. Though so you can't actually say that Rapunzel is literally the source of all Gothel's problems. Well, Gothel doesn't really... <laughs> it, to be honest, what are Gothel's problems? Well, I guess I can say at the beginning of the movie, where the, you know, her long-lasting... Um, flower is being taken to them a uh, queen to birth this new baby mm -hmm. I think that's where the problems begin to where now instead of worrying about this flower keeping her alive just to worry about this baby yeah and the interesting thing, too, is, like, she ages, and, like, I don't know. I haven't finished Rapunzel's Tangled Adventure, but I don't think she's immortal. So, that would create problems for Gothel eventually, anyway. I mean, people just like expanding their life, because, I don't know. Um, something I should mention, there is a lot more to that flower than this movie goes into. Um, and yeah, I, I think, um, I think that should uh, be obvious. Forgetting juice. 
I, I like I think that should be obvious given that like her tears brought uh um Flynn or Eugene back to life. Um, I mean, it is in her blood. Yeah. Um, and like obviously, like that may seem weird at first, but if you know the actual story of Rapunzel, like the Brothers Grimm version, like. Her love interest literally had his eyes gouged out, and her tears cured his blindness. So, okay then. Yeah, brothers. The brothers Grimm fairy tales were a lot darker than their Disney counterparts. This is why there's Disney counterparts. <laughs> yeah. So you can actually tell them to children. <laughs> exactly. Except I think the brothers Grimm tales are told to children, at least in Germany. I don't know. I don't know if you know that, that Um, that this is a German fairy tale. Telling them to children without scarring them. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know if you knew that, but this is a German fairy tale. And because of that, I've gone and listened to all the uh, musical numbers in this movie in German. And they're pretty good. They're pretty good, except for I've Got a Dream for some reason. I don't know what they were thinking with the translations of I've Got a Dream in other languages, but they ruined that song. (laughs) And it's a shame, because it's the best song in the movie. That's the the weird thing. I'm not expecting you to say that's the best song. Well, like, all the songs in this movie are honestly great. Um, I love When Will My Life Begin. I love The Healing Incantation. I love um, Mother Knows Best. I love Rapunzel Knows Best. The only one I don't really have any attachment to is the one that she sings um, uh, when she first comes out of the tower. Hmm. Makes sense. Oh, and so I... Absolutely love I See the Light. Um, I think I See the Light is probably Disney's best We Are in Love song. Hmm. Like, I, I definitely, like, I think it even beats a whole new world, to be honest. So, and I know that's pro- problems that um, faced, you know, the, these two lovebirds. Did you know, if you just call down a friendly Sora, half of those things can be gone because they need, did you know, short world for quick, you know, for gameplay reasons. <laughs> and you know the funny thing too is like Zachary Levi, the person who voices Eugene, actually only auditioned for the part of Eugene so that he could get into Kingdom Hearts. Congratulations. <laughs> and then the funny thing is, like, Mandy Moore, the person who voices Rapunzel, did not end up being the voice of Rapunzel in Kingdom Hearts. Hmm. I don't know who they got to voice her, I just know it wasn't her. But it is Mandy Moore in, the, uh, in Rapunzel's Tangled Adventure, and in Ever After and Before Ever After. So, yeah, I mean, kind of weird. Uh, His one dream to be in Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> it's a little bit sad that that came... Oh, actually, what's that? I'm Googling this. Because I forgot when it released. So, while you're doing that, I will talk about some of the other things. Like, the horse... <laughs> the horse is basically a dog, and... I love just how hilarious it is. Like, they didn't need to do it, but they did, and it's funny as hell. Nine years later. Well, is I mean, when he premiered in a Kingdom Hearts game. I guess, you know, they were working on it way before then. That's when he premiered in that Kingdom Hearts game. And, um... Well, you know, Square and Disney just took forever with that one. 
I would not even say Disney Square, it's just like, okay, okay. But what if we made another game and complicated the plot more? More is like, yes. And then I heard people talking about like being surprised that Disney tie-ins are still going to be a thing in Kingdom Hearts 4. And I'm like, why are you surprised? Actually, that is surprising. It's um what they did in Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, how the plot's progressing, that is. I'm sorry, but like if they cut Disney out of Kingdom Hearts, it's not Kingdom Hearts anymore. Well, not Disney, but more of Disney Worlds. Also, they've been neglecting Final Fantasy forever. Yes, Kingdom they Hearts have. Three had nothing of yeah. Final Fantasy. Yes, <laughs> they have, and they need to fix that. But like, if you completely cut Disney out of Kingdom Hearts, then it then it just isn't Kingdom Hearts anymore. And I'm not even a Kingdom Hearts fan, and I know that. The entire franchise is built on being a crossover between Disney and Final Fantasy, and they've... And, and yes, you're right, they have been neglecting the Final Fantasy. I like, think they're going to be returning to the Final Fantasy. Also, no, the, we, as we all know, the series is um, brought forth by Sora's clown shoes. Well, aren't they not going to be a thing in Kingdom Hearts 4? I mean, I can definitely... I would definitely see... Um, oh, Sora's clown shoes? Oh yeah, definitely. They they died. <laughs> Rest in peace, Sora's clown shoes. Yay. Um, But... I want to be the way Kingdom Hearts is going right now. Sora is just in another world. Actually, no, world's wrong, wrong term. Another universe. Regarding this movie, um, a lot of people have a lot of weird, interesting questions that ironically kind of get answered in the TV series that we will cover eventually. Um, I think probably the most pressing question that people tend to have is like, how did Mother Gothel know the song that she had to sing? Actually, okay, that does. I don't wonder that now. Yeah, that is a very interesting question. And the TV series doesn't exactly answer it, but it does give a plausible answer. Makes sense. So, you know, that, that it, it, it'll be interesting when we get to that. Um, regarding this movie, though, um, I, I, okay, so at some point during development, they actually changed the title. Uh, it was originally going to be called Rapunzel, and then they changed it to Tangled. Um, and yeah, they there's got too many. Um main characters having their name as the movie title. They got heavily criticized for doing it, and, like, people said it was a stupid decision and blah, 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 blah. I actually think it was a really good decision. Um, Sorry, crit got criticized by who? I really don't know. I found this information on Wikipedia. Ah. <laughs> uh, um, and I only I skimmed it. Saw and, um... Still don't know who got angry at them. Yeah, like, I only skimmed it because we had to get to this. Um, Walt Disney, they, they performed a seance, and Walt Disney cursed them out. <laughs> but, like, I think it was a really good decision because this movie, like, while, Reten while Rapunzel's story arc is, like, really, really important to this movie, so is Eugene's. And I would argue that it's just as important. Like, both of their characters develop a lot um, throughout the course of the movie. Well, I mean, also, um, the title is also directly relating to our long hair main character, who, and I'm gonna say, has none, like, no. 
let's say this comes out right. Um, effect. You, they they did not affect anything in this. Um, you know what proceeds before the story. So they were quite literally tangled in the situation. Yeah, like it's a it's about a lot. Like the title reflects a lot more than just her hair. And, um, you know, there are some other funny things, too. Like, almost everything just comes back. Like, you know, it, it a lot of other movies, you'd have these scenes in the Snuggly Duckling, and then you would never see those characters again, but they do get brought back. The whole joke of, uh, you know, them never being able to get Eugene's nose right on the Wanted posters, and then later, when Maximus is searching for him, he comes across a Wanted poster of Flynn, and isn't quite able to recognize him until he covers up his nose. Like, um, so there's actually a, um, that same wanted poster in Disneyland. Still can't get his nose right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Perfect. Well, now I Just wish they took a picture of it. Yeah, it's just absolutely perfect. It's hilarious. Um, also, the king and queen don't say anything in this movie. They have zero lines of dialogue. And oddly... What they do have is god-ass good music um, in the background. And, you know, oddly, I think it's fitting that they don't say anything. Because they're able to... Like, the movie is able to show what they're feeling without having them say anything. It's beautiful in that regard. No, so it's way more. It's way more of here's. Segway. <laughs> I was able. I mean, mentioning Disneyland a lot. I was able to play. The, um, the song, when the king and queen are lifting up the lantern. In an actual Disney recording studio. Which, by the way, that was amazing. But also, playing that um, really gives you more knowledge of the emotion, because you have to replicate the emotion. Yeah, as someone who um, studies music theory, like I already understood how the emotion uh, was working with the music. Um... I think it's right when that cut happens, right when um, it cuts the entire town, that's when it starts becoming more hopeful. Um, you know, your sound becomes more full. There's probably a crescendo there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and just to cut back to about like where I was saying about every like things tying into each other. We have this amazing musical number about, like, you know, having a dream that you want to work towards. And then later on, when F Eugene and Rapunzel are on this boat and they're about to watch the lanterns take off, uh, they talk to each other. And, no. like, Rapunzel... <laughs> it, 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 it's truly beautiful writing here because, like... When Rapunzel asks him, what if it is everything that I dreamed it would be, what do I do then? And he tells her that the beautiful part about that is that now you get to find a new dream. And then later, when Eugene is dying, they, like, hold each other and, like, they... T it's a really emotional scene because they were... They, t they voice that they were each other's new dream. <laughs> and it's... God, that is just perfect. That is beautiful writing. And then you have several moments throughout the movie where, like, I feel like it makes their romance more believable because you clearly see, like, gestures that are flirtatious um, from... Mostly from Rapunzel, honestly. Um, but there are some things from Flynn, too, where he's clearly 
being flirty, or like even early on. Like I was noticing flirtatious signs as early as right after them leaving the snuggly duckling. And that's fairly early into the movie. I also love that this movie opens with Flynn, like talking about how like he's going to die in this movie. And then by the time it happens, you've probably forgotten about that line. Oh yeah. (laughs) He's dead. Avery, you, you know the reason. I just can't, um, it's just the plot line of, um, you know, lo- especially, I know it's three days, and it does make it seem more believable, but the concept of, you know, falling in love with someone you just met, that's something I just can never wrap my head around. I And that's more of a me thing. Yeah, and I think largely that has to do with, like, you never having had a relationship to begin with. Like, I know for me, I've developed crushes on people barely quickly after meeting them before. Like, yeah, it's also really neat to, um, the possibility of me being, what is it called, demisexual? Yeah. And, you know, this is the first time I think you've ever actually spoken about that with me. So (laughs) now this is going into the podcast. I hope you're cool with that. Yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, what? no one really knows who I am. Yeah. So like this, you know, it, it, I can understand how that concept would be dis- difficult to grasp for someone who is demi-romantic or demisexual, um, or even a or even aromantic and asexual, because the entire concept of romance in general is difficult to grasp when you're aromantic. Um, and like, there's a really great video by Jaden Animations that you should watch if you want to understand what aromantic and what being aromantic and asexual is like um but yeah i i just think that for a love story particularly for one told in a movie i think this one does a phenomenal job of telling it in a way that's compelling um in a way that makes sense and it's it, like with them not getting married at the end, it doesn't feel totally, totally rushed. Like, sure, the ending says that they eventually get married, but we don't see that. I think um, for me, and I can definitely, when watching it, I can ign- is what is it called? Suspension disbelief. When I look at the overview, it's like, wait, that doesn't that doesn't seem right. I mean, it helps that they spent the entirety of those three days together. Also, there's a lot of blackmail. Well, in the first day. (laughs) In the first day. But then by the time we get to the scene... There's more black than male. (laughs) Is he blacked out? (laughs) Like, by the time we get to the scene where they're on the boat and watching the lanterns and she tries to give him back the crown, he's pushing it to the side, because at that point, he doesn't care about the crown anymore. Now, okay, let's talk about the villains now. Okay, there's one thing I I do wonder about the king and queen. So, first of all, Flynn is wanted by the capital. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, by the way, I found your daughter. While that makes sense, I just I just felt that happen a little bit too fast. 
essentially, it, like, I am gonna go, going to kind of spoil this, because it's really not that big of a deal, but essentially for finding the Lost Princess, um, Eugene, or Flynn, whichever you want to call him, was given amnesty for all of his past crimes. That makes sense. I just felt that, for at least what we've been shown, it's just like, tower to they're already in the castle <laughs> yeah and then like the tower will still be important later um like that's going to come back and yeah there's just a lot uh i think <sighs> also I've been... um big spoiler um Mother Gothel dies in Infinity Wars. <laughs> yeah, she per the way she turned to dust was very reminiscent of Infinity War. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because we're still nowhere close to that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I And, you know, again, like I said in the last episode, I kind of hope the wheel lands on Thor so we can get further along in the MCU. Thinking about that, I mean, I know you have more things to say, but once we get to that, I think it's time we spin something. You think it's time we what? Spin something. But first you have to get through the one thing that you probably have to say. You mean the ratings and the stuff like that? Well, yeah. Well, do I have more things to say about the movie? I would have more things to say, um, but I feel like if I go too long, I'm probably going to spoil the entirety of what I've seen of Rapunzel's Tangled Adventure and of Before Ever After and of Ever After. <laughs> I, I mean, so bottom line, just me putting it... Train your dragon. <laughs> Like, just putting it lightly, I think this is my favorite Disney movie ever. And I've been really contemplating if I even like this movie more than Scott Pilgrim. Hmm. Well, I mean, we, we had both on the podcast now, so... Yeah. Yeah, because you opened that movie saying this was your favorite movie. Yes, I did. And then I gave it a 9.9. .9. Are you going to edit that at all, or...? No. I Are still you think... Are Tangled a 9.9? .9? We will see. But, hmm. I mean, I think we should talk about how... Um, how this movie turns out critically. Want me to Google that, or...? I already Between. have it. Cool. So IMDB gives this a 7.7. 7. That's way too low. Rotten, tom that. Rotten Tomatoes gives it an 89. Kind of low, but I get it. And then Metacritic has a 71, which just, no, too low. 88 percent of Google users liked the movie. Who the hell is going to um, Google to rate things? Well... Not a sentence. <laughs> Lily, I do need a bit more time to think. Um, so, why don't you give your rating to this movie? I think I would. And... Like I said, this movie is better than mid-tier, but not in the same ballpark of, like, how I view How Train Your Dragon series, you know? Yeah, and I get that. The romantic aspects of this movie are such a major factor, and for someone like, like you, it, it can... Um, it Actually, can definitely I related take... it to um, How to Train Your Dragon. 
I love the romantic aspect because they allowed the characters to age. And with um, Astrid and Hiccup aging, that just feels more believable well, see, at the, this point. The thing with How to Train Your Dragon is like, um, I felt the romance was sudden, but like, of course... It developed more in later movies because How to Train Your Dragon was designed to be more than one movie. Mm-hmm. Whereas Tangled really wasn't, um, at least not entirely. It was designed to leave room for more stuff in the future, but not really designed with the plans, with like active plans to make yeah, more. Yeah, really think about it, like the first movie. Like, the romance was really just sudden. But that just cloud... Like, it's just cloudy in my brain. Because when I... I I just think about the other movies... That... Expanded on that so much... That basically... Lifts up the first movie. Yeah. Um... But I will have to say, um, to the movie's credit, it was very good, entertaining, um, frying pan. I love, (laughs) I love the frying pan. It's hilarious. And like, the thing too is like, that looks like it's a cast iron frying, frying pan. And those things are heavy. So... When yeah, how, the hell, how the hell is Rapunzel wielding that with ease? <laughs> yeah, like, whoa, Eugene getting hit with the frying pan like that, that had to really hurt. Actually, now that I think about it, how the hell, um, like, did the ending happen in Tangled the way it did? With how built up uh, Rapunzel was, Probably just knock out um, Mother Gothel in one hit. (laughs) Well, to be fair, she did have her back turned, and she wasn't holding the frying pan at that particular time. That's Uh. true. But, I mean, like, if she's able to hold that frying pan with ease, one punch should have, like, to the head should have done it. (laughs) I don't think so. I don't know. know. My my head cannon is Rapunzel is absolutely ripped. <laughs> like, I'm a weak bitch, but if I swing a... F- if I swing a cast iron frying pan and smack somebody in the head with it, they're probably unconscious. I'm just well, being I mean, real. If you swing someone with a cast iron pan, I'm just saying how easily Rapunzel's able to move the cast iron pan. Like, it's no problem. I picked up a cast iron pan... That's a problem to move. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, she is hoisting Mother Gothel, Gothel up with nothing but her hair. So. Yeah. Like, bringing her up and down a tower every day. I wonder how much, I wonder how much that kills the, um, the hair cells. Probably not much, because it's magic hair. Like, if she wasn't magic, though. Like... It also seems, like, very clear that the hair doesn't really snap off, um, and that the only way that it can really, like, you can cut it, but it's not going to snap on its own, or, like, if you pull at it, it's not going to come out. Like, that's just Mm -hmm. what it seems like. Also, I know I'm delaying my rating, but I just remember something. I like how Mother Gothel really tried to not involve the baby in, in any of this. It's, at first, you try to cut the hair and just be done with it. Nope, that didn't work. I was like, I, well, guess I need the baby. <laughs> I think, like, you know, even giving her that much credit is not... I, not really justified, to be honest. I think she's the... It, she's really horrible, 
regardless. And she's an evil person. But at the end of the day, she really... I mean... She just did not want a child. But she also wanted to be immortal. Yeah. And she had to pick one or the other. So anyway, you do have to give your rating. I know. I, I think... I think 8.5 is a uh, reasonable. Okay. That's what you want to settle on? Yeah. I've been trying to think if I have any real criticisms of this movie. And really, truly, I don't. There is not a single aspect of Neil this movie. Soft, okay. There is not a single aspect of this movie that I do not like. Like, sure, there's the song that, like, there's the song that I mentioned earlier that I wasn't that big of a fan of. But it's not like I hate the song. I just don't love it as much as the other ones. So... I've thought long and hard about this. And this is probably never, ever going to happen again. Avery's giving a base 10 to a movie? Yes. I am giving this movie a 10 out of 10. Holy shit. <laughs> this will probably never happen again. And with that, I think we should spin the wheel. So, we covered some pretty good movies so far. And I know what's on the wheel. Why do I feel like I know what's going to uh, be soon? <laughs> well, let's just see first. All right? I am spinning it now. <laughs> and... It landed on Catching Fire. Okay. So we're going back I, to the Hunger Games. Fun. Huh. Did not, not expect what I, that. <laughs> I did not either. But, hey. I forgot we saw that on the wheel. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, because you look at the wheel, it's on your phone. <laughs> But yeah, um, until next time, I've been Avery, that's been Lily, and we will be seeing you. I've been a frying pan. <laughs>